you're talking about ancient Egypt. And uh, can anybody tell me what this is a map of? That's right. This is Egypt at uh, the time. And uh, who can tell me what river runs through Egypt? That's right, the Nile. Now, an interesting thing about the Nile River is most rivers, we believe, you know, go from north to south. Now, the Nile River is interesting because it runs from south to north. And every year when uh, the Nile floods, it uh, creates uh, an amount of silt around the bay areas and uh, around the coast and all through Egypt. And the Nile was so important to the ancient Egyptians because when the Nile flooded, as I said, it would fertile the land and then they were able to grow their crops. And they're able to grow their crops, they're able to feed themselves, and they're also able to feed their uh, farm animals and all that. And the Nile was also used as a uh, way of travel from city to city. And when the Nile may not have uh, flooded during a rainy season or anything like that, then the ancient Egyptians really suffered through it. So the Nile was, they were very dependent on the Nile River. Now, because the Nile ran from the south to the north, it was mainly because of the elevation that was in it, which causes this for Upper Egypt to be down here, and then Lower Egypt to be right here. And an interesting thing is most of the uh, pyramids or where the ancient kings had their uh, places of worship and everything were all around down here in this area and around here. And with the Nile, they were able to travel up and down just with that. Now, as the title says, these are the Egyptian pyramids. Now, where do you think these pyramids are exactly? These pyramids are uh, the pyramids of Giza. And you guys can see that uh, these uh, steps right here, you can see them all around in these pyramids right here. Well, when they first were built, they, weren't, they were steps, but eventually they were smoothed out. And the, uh, around the areas on the triangle, it was all smooth. But after thousands and thousands of years of wind and sand and pretty much just erosion, it caused the uh, pyramids to look like this. And these pyramids, they didn't just build these for fun or whatever, because they used thousands and thousands of slaves to build these things. And it took, I don't even know, it took probably hundreds of years just to build these pyramids to what they are today. And the reason they built them like this was because these pyramids were also tombs for ancient pharaohs or any uh, ancient Egyptian who was high in the hierarchy. And right here we have kind of like the inside of a pyramid, if, if you want to say that, where it kind of shows the king's chamber. So this would be where the pharaoh would be uh, buried. And uh, here's his queen's chamber. And when a pharaoh passed, he was, uh, he was able to take pretty much everything with him. So he could have had his favorite wife, because most pharaohs had multiple wives or concubines. And he was able to take his favorite wife if he had said so before he died. He could take her with him to the afterworld. And uh, he was also able to take servants. Now, some of those servants probably didn't want to go, but it's the Pharaoh's orders, so they had no other choice. And right here, we have the gallery. And in the gallery is pretty much where all uh, the Pharaoh's uh, gold, food, or any other possessions that he had or he thought he would need in the afterlife because the ancient Egyptians believed in an afterlife and they also believed that 
once you die, you kind of start your a whole new life in the afterlife. And pharaohs believed in this so much because they also a pharaoh also means God. So to the ancient Egyptians, when a pharaoh died, he became a god in the afterworld. And in these places, you can just see where they have passageways so that they're able to get in and out of the pyramid. And uh, in most of these pyramids, they set up uh, traps for uh, grave robbers because I'm sure there's plenty of pyramids that were just destroyed, or probably not destroyed, but broken into, and their treasures taken. So I'm sure there's plenty of pyramids or tombs out there that have been robbed. But the ancient Egyptians planted traps and other things in them to cause you know, mayhem and everything like that. So if you've seen uh, the movie The Mummy or The Mummy Returns, and you've seen you know, those kind of traps when that happened. That's what the ancient Egyptians did. Okay, here, I'm going to do this. So, as I said before, the word pharaoh also means God. So, I don't know exactly which pharaoh this would be, but this is kind of uh, like the headdress and everything that they would wear. And the pharaoh was the ruler of ancient Egypt. Now, here, we have the pyramid of Gaza. Now, you can kind of see the pyramid behind the Sphinx. And we'll talk about the Sphinx in just a minute. But you know that this is the pyramid of Gaza. We have the, you can see the Sphinx that's in front of it. And this is one of the most popular pyramids and uh, pretty much one of the wonders of the world, if you will. Mummification is a process that the ancient Egyptians did on uh, the dead, mostly hierarchy or uh, pharaohs of the day. And during this mummification, they would remove the uh, internal organs, or at least the ones that they believed that were very sacred, and which would be they would put them in these canopic jars, and these jars would have those main uh, organs, and they would be buried along with uh, the mummy right here. And another way they did mummification was they also they removed your internal organs, and they also removed your brain, and uh, then they wrapped you up in a cloth. So to protect you on your way to the underworld. And here, again, we have the Nile River. Remember, the Nile River, very, very important to the ancient Egyptians. Probably one, the most important thing in their aspect of life. And then here, we have King Tut. Now, he is probably one of the most well-known sarcophagus. And also, he died at the age of, I believe it was 17? Or somewhere around there. So he was very, very young. But what makes him to be well known is what, there was a controversy around his death. And some say it was an accident. Some say that it was, uh, he was killed by somebody else trying to gain his throne. Thousands of years later, we still don't know all the facts, and possibly we may never know. Okay, and here again, we have uh, the pyramids, and as I said, today we see them with all these steps and everything. And But when they were first built, they were smooth, right here. And most, some pyramids, not all of them, would have uh, smaller pyramids that were right here, in which we would have these as the Queen's Pyramid. Uh, if uh, his wives died later, or if they died at the same time, or if 
say, the kill. And at the top of these pyramids, you see right here, the top of the pyramid once were gold tips. So what they pretty much did was they created a gold pyramid, like a very slight one, and then they placed it on top. Now, today, if you looked at the top, it's not going to look golden or anything. That's also due to the erosion and the wind effects that thousands of years have done to these pyramids. And then right here you have the causeways that go from the entrances pretty much into the mortuary chamber. Okay. Now I know you're probably getting tired of me talking about how important the Nile is, but you have to get that in your mind because without the Nile and without its flooding, around these areas, the ancient Egyptians would have probably, I wouldn't say they would never have survived, but they would have had a much more difficult time than any other place. And you can see these green areas right here. So when the Nile flooded, this is the fertile area right here. That is very, very important to the ancient Egyptians. So without it flooding and all that, stories of uh, greater Egyptian pharaohs and they just you can see and they, they do it with symbols they do it with uh, people and this is just the way they communicated so. and tomorrow we're going to learn a little bit more about the ancient Egyptians but we're going to get into a little bit more greater detail but this was just a kind of introduction to them so what we're going to 